everybody, Buddy Cosplay here. You know, sometimes in life, the orcs come out, or the humans start a war against you, and if you're an elf like me, you need to protect yourself. And I know that's a really cheesy intro, but uh, that's what you get, because today we're making a Lord of the Rings elven ex inspired, not expired, inspired shield. We're going to do a quick one day build where we're going to make an elven shield inspired by Lord of the Rings out of some foam board. This was $2.99 at Hobby Lobby. It's nothing more than two pieces of paper that sandwich in between them a piece of foam. It's pretty rigid, easily broken, uh, but it will work great for what we're going to do. Now I've already measured this and I know that it is 20 inches across. And I wanted to find the center line, so I just split it at 10 and drew a line right down the center, which I did on this paper, I'm sorry, this board, found the center line right here. And I just took some paper and I taped it down at that center line so I have it right at the center so I could draw my template on it. And when I'm done, I flip it over and I can trace my template again on this side. That way I have good symmetry. So, like I said, I put it down, used a little bit of masking tape to put the paper down like that. And I've gone ahead and drew or drawn a template and pencil. Okay, the template has been cut out. It's still affixed to my thumb board. So now I can trace both sides and get good symmetry. One side is traced, and I just flip that over and continue the same exact process to trace this side. Alright. That's done. You gently remove your template. We now have our outline. Now cutting foam board is not simple. It, uh, it doesn't cut well around corners, so there's a little trick that you can use when you're cutting it to use a very sharp knife and do three passes. The first pass to cut the top layer of paper. The second one would go deeper into the foam, and the third one would cut the bottom side of the paper. So it's a little more laborious but that's just kind of the trade-off when you're using this material. So the first one, we'll do the top layer here. And we'll go over a second time now, pushing a little harder. And if they cut well, it should pop right off. So that's the three pass trick for using a poster board and getting cleaner cuts off of it. That comes in real handy when you have corners and curves, such as up here. If it starts snagging and ripping that paper, your razor is too, too dull. You need to stop and sharpen. Okay, we now have our base form all cut out and it's ready to go. Now comes the interesting part. Since this is so rigid and shields aren't flat, how are we going to get any shape in this? You can't use a heat gun. Um, you can't force it to bend, so I'm going to show you the trick. Now the trick to bending foam board is to use its own properties against itself. And by that I mean this paper will constrict when it's wet and after it starts to dry it will start to bow. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover this in water and allow it to bow. But we don't want it just to bow 
in every single direction. So we're going to use some tape to constrain which way it bends and which way it does not. So I'm going to use duct tape. I just have this laid on the floor. I have a plastic lid from an old tub just to give a place to, for the tape to stick to. And I'm going to go right down the center. Just to make sure it holds down tight, I'm going to put some strips of one on the top. Now that should constrain it from bending this way. Now that's done, I have a large brush and a bucket of water, and I'm just going to put a lot of water on it. Now you don't have to drown it, but you really want to get it good and wet. Brush a good layer of water over it. And let it absorb it. And that's it. We're going to leave that water on there for about an hour or two and come back and check on it. It is now the next day and here's our finished product. You can't really tell how curved this is from there. So it gave it a nice curve just from adding some water to that poster board. I'm sorry, foam board. And I went ahead and continued the same process with a piece sitting right here. Now this one was held down with masking tape. Stuck a whole lot less. So note to self, use masking tape over duct tape. And I bowed this one because I'm going to use it for the front. I'm going to make a piece that's going to sit on the front. And that's bowed the same as this one, so it'll fit on there nice and flush. So now we're going to continue by making our piece here and add some detail. And it appears we have a pretty good, decent looking shape. I'm going to use the same three swipe rule. cut roll to cut this out and we're going to paste it right in the center. Okay we've got our piece cut out. I sanded it a little bit to make the edges a little smoother and we're just going to take this and put it where we want it. As you can see good planning pays off. Um, well you can't see that good planning pays off. What I'm trying to say is that thinking ahead and planning ahead will pay off in the end. So I went down and marked the center line so I know where the center is. That would help me center this much better than just eyeballing it. And once I figured out where I wanted it, I traced it so I know exactly where to stick it. <clears throat> now my surfaces are clean, my heat, my glue gun is heating up. Now you can step where we're at with just the one piece on the front and paint it, which you can find a little bit later in this video, but I decided I wanted to make this a little bit more intricate. So I'm going to take some three millimeter foam that I've cut into half inch strips and use that to go around the edges just to create a layer of depth known as piping. Or edging. I also went around here, kind of drew in a design. I'm going to follow this plan just to add something extra to this so it's not so flat. Uh, but the choice is really up to you. 
So we're going to continue with that. I'm using some super glue. And like I said, these little pieces of piping. Now what I found the best way to do piping, because the pieces have to match up, is to get a piece that's near where they're going to connect and leave a spot with no glue. And let this hang over. Go ahead and tack this one piece down and give it a minute to dry. And that way this is loose enough we can cut this to make it match and then glue that down later. If you try to glue it down now, it may not get it cut right. So now I can just kind of lift this back, see where it needs to go. It's going to be straight down. And I'm just going to cut that piece. Just like that. And I can glue that in down. Give that a second to dry and just carry that on around my design here. So here's the pattern I came up with using different thicknesses of the craft foam. Of course you can feel free to do it however you like. This is just what I did. I liked it. I think it turned out pretty nice. There's a couple things I decided to change. First, I went uh, and decided to put some Plasti dip on top of this and second I made these designs in it to make this look more like wood The more I thought about it being smooth The more I thought if this is supposed to be elf, it's supposed to be natural So uh, I decided to go with this like wood grain effect that I put in it It's nothing's fancy. I just burned it in with a hot knife and now I'm just uh, Getting some plasti dip on it to make sure everything is as it should be as as far as protected and uh, be ready to paint it so here it is in the light one would wanted to uh, add a wooden texture so I burned down into it with a hot knife this is before I put on the plasti dip I have not done the back yet and let me just show you the hot knife <clears throat> It's basically a generic soldering iron that I picked up at Harbor Freight, Harbor Freight for a couple of dollars. That's all it is. Just had to get warmed up and I burned some shapes into it and poked a couple holes. The design, just my own. I didn't follow any pattern. For the back, I figure what I can do is put a similar shaped thing that will connect on both sides and the top. So I have three points of contact. It will pretty much hover in the center. We can do that on both sides. And with that lift in the center, we can put some rope to be a handle or a piece of foam, whatever we want between those things. So what I did was I put this on the half side, on the line in the middle, in the middle line, and drew up an idea of where I want. It would touch here, here, and over on the other side. And once I did that, I folded it in half again so I have good symmetry. And I'm going to cut that out. Okay, that'll be our basic shape. Hi, world. I am six years old. Yeah, I just had a birthday. And right. I got lots of presents. All right, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. I'm going to add some googly eyes as bolt effects, I think, Can I help? on these sections up here, which is supposed to be metal, over the wood. So I might add a couple around. I have not decided 100%, but if you see these later, you'll know why. The first thing I'm going to do is work on cutting out the back the templates. Whoa. Whoa. All right, be gone with you. Be gone with you. She said, I am going to watch. I am not going to be gone with me. Darn it.
being weird on the internet again. Ah, uh, yes. Why are you such a weirdo? I am an alien. You're an alien? <laughs> Lily really likes to be on camera. So she's gonna keep coming down. I don't blame her. I got two candy suckers. I got two. I thought you were coming down to show me something. Doesn't look like you're trying to show me nothing. I got two suckers. <laughs> and I already opened the watermelon, Daddy. Thanks. It's no, it's mine. They're mine. Look. My candy ah. dispenser. Oh, look at that. Look, hold on. I love warm hugs. Ah, my brain. Weird. So these are all cut out now. And since this is bowed, the purpose of this is to touch on three corners. So I'm going to touch here, here, and here. It's going to leave this area here kind of popped up a little bit. And that's going to allow us to run uh, a piece of foam or rope or whatever we want between these two pieces that'll be pulled away from here as a handle. So that's the purpose of these. We just gotta cut these holes out. All right, I know where it's gonna to touch, it's gonna to touch the top and the edges. So that's where I'm going to add the initial bits of glue. So we'll start with the one closest to the camera. amount of glue and three points. I've decided to go ahead and add some of these wiggly eyes to be like bolts for this piece. I'm gonna make this more metallic as if that's being, this metallic is being held onto this wood. So I've just got some googly eyes and some super glue. And I'm just gonna try my best to line them up. Okay, we're back with our shield. I just hit the back with a little bit of black spray paint. I'm not doing any real detail on the back, but I just didn't want it to be plain white foam board. I didn't even do it very well because this will be hidden against me when I'm holding the prop. So here's the front of the prop. Uh, the plastic dip had dried and I went around knowing that some of this was going to be silver and went ahead and hit this part really good silver and the edge all the edging as well as this. I think I'm going to leave these to be metallic. And the reason I did that is because I wanted these googly eyes to look like bolts and I wanted the centerpiece to be metal. So now I'm going to focus on this part. I'm just going to paint over the paint that's there. There's a lot of overspray and I'm going to use a brown. I'm going to cover the whole thing in a layer of this brown. It's kind of a darker brown. The actual color is earth brown and uh, once that dries I'm going to go over with a lighter brown and even a uh, almost well this is considered desert sand to just make some highlights in it I've got the first layer of brown on. I'm just going to speed up the drying time using my heat gun and then I'm going to add the second layer. The second layer is on. The brown's looking pretty good. I'm going to give this time to dry, but while that's doing so, I'm going to do some of this trim here with a island blue color. I just like this color. I was going to use a green, but I currently don't have any green. So this is just going to add some color and make it stand out a little bit more. It'll also separate these metal looking pieces from the wood. Okay, I've got the paint on here the way I like it so far. This is where we're at. I'm going to highlight some of this with a little bit of a darker brown. 
Oh, I'm sorry, a lighter brown. And I'm just going to do that by using a brush. I happen to have a fan brush. You can use whatever. And just barely getting a little bit of paint on the brush. Wiping most of it away. Just so there's a little bit left. So I can add subtle lines. Very, very subtle lines. Again, I'm just adding very light streaks of color with a mostly dry brush. Alright, I've gone through with the desert sand and also added a very, very light layer with this fan brush. I mean, this is how light I'm doing it. I'm barely getting the bristles in, just touching it, and then I'm working most of it out in the center. And when I put it on, you can barely tell I'm putting it on. But it gives it a small amount of a extra highlight that really kind of kind of adds an extra layer of color in here and kind of makes it stand out. All right, our shield has had time to dry. It is now later in the evening. I am home from work, enjoying a alcoholic beverage, censored. And we're going to uh, weather this shield. Let's take a look at it. Here it is now. This is where we're at. With the wood grain and everything, and what I want to do is use a black wash to get down in these cracks. I'm going to get some black paint and put it in a cup. Add some water to it to thin it down. I want this to be thin so it'll go down in those cracks and crevices really well and be easy, easier to wipe away. And my phone's ringing. Boop, 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 boop. Well, these people know that it's after work and I'm having a beer. And we're going to get started. I'm just going to take a little bit of this. Down those cracks. And the reason I put the clear coat on before doing this is to protect the paint underneath. If you try to do this without doing that, you may pull off some of your paint. Clear coat really helps to protect the work you've already done. Now, as you can see, just with that one pass, I left a lot of black behind in those cracks here. Got a little bit down in the crevices to make it older and worn looking. And uh, we're just going to continue that for the rest of it. That's a job well done, you can tell by the amount of paint you have on your fingers. And now you can see in areas where it looks like it's older. Little places like this where there's some grunge and some dirt. I've gone through and I've done that to the whole thing. It really makes these pop out better and gives it a sense of realism as if it's been used. And I know what you're saying to yourself right now, but the Elvish people would have pristine weapons. Sure, maybe, but this is my world. And in my world, they have dirty weapons because they're dirty elves. Yeah. And I have black fingers. So anyway, we're going to finish this up <clears throat> by going over the trim with the gold leaf rub and buff. I'm going to try it again. I tried it earlier. It just wasn't really working out over here. So I'm going to try it again and see if it'll turn out a little better. Now that is how rub and buff is supposed to look. Compare that to the other side where there's nothing. That really makes that pop out. So I'm going to continue out on the edge. I'm going to buff it out with a towel when I'm done, and we should be all done. Let me backtrack a little bit. I assume everybody knows what rub and buff is. Rub and buff is a metallic finish with wax, and uh, it goes on and dries, and it makes it a buffable layer of, um, I wouldn't say paint, but it's very similar to paint, just doesn't have the same properties as paint. You can see, 
Uh, it really goes on best with the finger. You could use a brush to get down into really small detailed spots, but you really want to be able to rub it in to make that wax in it dry up. Because that's what the purpose of it is, is to have that wax dry up so you can buff it. And once you have it on, it's dried a little bit, go over it with a cloth. You can buy a tube of this for about four bucks. I've had that tube through several projects, so it lasts a pretty good amount of time. Well worth the, you know, five dollar investment. So there we go. We have a finished product minus the handle and the last layer of clear coat. You don't really need to see the last layer of clear coat because it's simple enough. I'm just going to spray it on. But I like how this looks. I like how it feels like it's older and worn. And I'm just going to add a handle on the back. You can be as creative as you want with the shield. You can make something as simple as a piece of wood wrapped in leather, um, things like that. I've got some paracord, which in the military they call 550 cord, and it's purple. And I think that's a, a good color. So I'm just going to make a quick and simple handle from that. Now again, you could do whatever you feel you need to do. I just think this is going to work for my purposes. It's a cheap thing to do, but give me a place to hold it. And that's really all I need to finish my build. I would suggest taking a little bit of hot glue or something, putting on that knot so it doesn't come undone. But other than that, we are all done with our shield. Nice. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Before you go, you should think about stopping over and seeing me at cccosplay.com. There you can find articles and tips to help you take your cosplay to the next level. Also, if you sign up for the membership email list, I'll send you a few surprises and let you know about special things before anyone else has a chance to hear about them. It'll be our little secret. And remember, stay crafty.